Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. The Pi Pico W is a $6 microcontroller board that adds a Wi-Fi module to the original Pi Pico. Physically, the boards are the same size and both feature the RP2040 microcontroller. The 40-pin wide dip style brings out 26 of the 32 GPIOs, of which three can be analog inputs. The W adds a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, although Bluetooth is not enabled yet. Interestingly, this module has a ARM Cortex-M3 and an M4, each dedicated to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. With the addition of that module, I started wondering, how much power does this board consume? Later, I explained this measurement that involves Wi-Fi. By the way, there is a link to the Element 14 community with the MicroPython code I show in this video. With that, let's go measure. For power consumption comparisons, I'm using the Power Profiler Kit from Nordic Semiconductor. This USB-based tool powers a device under test and measures its current consumption with a high resolution at a sample rate up to 100,000 times per second. The NRF Connect software has an analog waveform showing current across time, with measurement boxes below that. And at the bottom, there are seven digital channels, like a logic analyzer, which are time correlated to the analog waveform. The original Pi Pico's onboard LED is attached to GPIO 25. Once MicroPython is programmed to blink the LED, I can attach the power profiler to its power pins. After it runs for a few seconds, we can clearly see how the current changes by about 2 milliamps from when the LED is on to when it is off. Now, if we program the same code to the Pico W, well, nothing happens. The reason is that the LED is attached to the Wi-Fi module and not the RP2040. In the code, if we use the string LED, it fixes the problem. And now we see, well, a few things. First, the current consumption is at least 20 milliamps more than the original Pico. And just look at the noise difference. So what's going on here? The increased current is because you have to power up the Wi-Fi module just to blink the LED. And the reason for the noise is actually in the datasheet. Too long didn't read. The W's onboard switcher has two different modes. There is a high efficiency mode that has the trade-off of more ripple at low currents, while there is a low efficiency mode which offers less ripple. In general, you probably won't have to worry too much about switching between the two modes, but it is good to know. Now, if you are using the W, I highly recommend reading the pinout section of the datasheet because it tells you which pins on the Pico W board have multiple functions. For an apples to apples comparison, Let's connect an LED to GPIO 15 and disable the W's Wi-Fi module by making GPIO 23 low. As it turns out, on average, the W draws a few milliamps less than the original. My guess is that my OG Pico has an older version of the RP2040 silicon. I just find the minor difference interesting. So for the purposes of this video, let's say if you turn off the radio, the consumption is roughly the same. Moving forward, let's see what happens when you use the radio to transmit. MQTT is a lightweight protocol for devices to send messages through a central server or broker. The broker has topics that devices can publish or subscribe to to send and receive information. In this example, a broker called Mosquito runs on a Raspberry Pi. The Pi Pico can publish sensor data to it, which then relays or brokers to a client, like the client version of Mosquito. I like this simulated setup because MQTT is very popular for IoT applications. We just need some information to transmit. The RP2040 has a built-in temperature sensor connected to channel four of its analog to digital converter. So let's read that sensor, do a little math, and then transmit the value just like a real IoT device would. Next, we can link up to a Wi-Fi router, connect to the MQTT broker, and then publish that information repeatedly. Running the code, the serial output shows what value the Pi W reads, and then the SSH window shows the value after it gets published to the broker. And just to show it's live, putting my finger on the RP2040 causes the temperature to go up a little. From here, you could connect to something like Graphena and get some reports. And you should probably add some other things to that MQTT payload, like timestamps or checksums. But I just wanted to get an idea of what the power consumption was like. On the profiler's waveform, we can see one cycle. The W turns on, MicroPython does something, and then our code connects to the access point and MQTT broker. Next, we see the one second delay, and then the transmission of our latest temperature reading over and over and over. 
Zooming in, we can see the W draws about 70 milliamps while transmitting and about 50 milliamps when sitting in the idle or delay loop. That kind of current draw when the radio transmits doesn't really surprise me. However, taking a temperature once per second is usually overkill, which means an IoT device like our simulated one spends most of its time doing nothing. So let's use sleep modes to get that 50 milliamps of idle current into the single digit range. By the way, I'm focused on MicroPython here because I know many of you start out by using the Pico boards with that. The binary I'm using is a nightly build, so some aspects of what I show may change over time or get fixed. In MicroPython, there are three ways to sleep. The first is just a loop and not really a mode. Second is light sleep, which will retain the contents of RAM, and then the program continues execution when it wakes up. Last is deep sleep, which causes the RAM contents to be lost and the processor restarts when it resumes. So in this example, the W toggles the LED, delays for a few seconds, and then deep sleeps for about five seconds. The rest of the code does not execute because the RP2040 reboots when it wakes up. There is a method in MicroPython to determine what woke up the processor, but for the profiling exercise, I'm not using it. Speaking of the profiler, we can clearly see when the processor blinks the LED, delays, and then goes to sleep for five seconds. And check out the current during that time. It's about 1.5 milliamps. So in this example, we can see how it is possible to save a ton of energy between active states by keeping the Wi-Fi module off and putting the RP2040 to sleep. Now let's combine everything we've done together. I'm not going through this code line by line, but there are a few things I do want to make sure I mention. First, the MQTT library I'm using is from Random Nerd Tutorials. There is a link to it in the show notes. Next, there are two pins defined for the PPK's logic analyzer. These will help us find events in the analog waveform. Next, I turned all of the big code blocks into functions to make the main event loop easier to read. The first functional thing we do is blink the LED. Then we check the internal temperature sensor, call a function to convert ADC steps to Celsius, and prepare the MQTT payload. By the way, along with the logic analyzer pins, these one second sleeps are so we can more easily find events in the waveform. In the next block, we make sure the Wi-Fi radio is turned on, connect to the access point, and then reach out to the MQTT broker. Once everyone is talking, we publish the temperature as a string to the topic, which in this case I called element 14. I found that MicroPython queues up these operations, so we actually need to pause a bit before the deep sleep. And I also found that I have to turn the radio off before sleeping. And then, after all of that, we get to the long-awaited nap. After a few seconds, the processor will wake up and do it all over again, usually. Looking at the PPK, you can see all of that activity. To save time, I've annotated this graphic to show how the W goes from about 2 milliamps in deep sleep all the way up to peaks of 125 milliamps while transmitting. I call that dynamically impressive. When I first saw it took about 40 milliamps just to light up the onboard LED, I was concerned about the W. But after seeing those measurements, I'm happy with its performance. And I look forward to seeing how using the C SDK changes this profile. Of course, your application is probably going to be different, so if you have questions about the W or ideas for other things we could measure, let me know over on the Element 14 community. The show notes will have links that I found helpful, the code that I used, and that last measurement as a saved trace that you can load into the NRF Connect software. I mean, if you want to. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to practicing different sleep modes on my electronics workbench.